I was not actually planning on doing another one, but I came across something beautiful that I'm going to add to. So here's where we have our lovely Sadhguru. This is from his Isha Foundation YouTube channel. With Karma, a guide, a yogi's guide to crafting your destiny. This is a book by Sadhguru. Uh, Sadhguru seeks to put you back in the driver's seat, turning you from a terror-struck passenger to a confident driver navigating the course of your own destiny. And then, by living consciously and fully, inhabiting each moment, you can free yourself from the cycle, inhabiting. Have you read the karma book yet? What's your favorite insight or takeaway? And there's a page, I think it's page 84, and it says, People in civilized society carry a great deal of unexpressed emotion within. Now, if emotions never find full expression, the energy can turn around and become deeply damaging to one's health and well-being. This accounts for the upswing of depression and mental illness across the world. So let's take a couple of looks at all of this because when you have a human perspective on living life and you are knowing spirituality means human because, again, you're the essence of all this energy and then with the trauma informed, I have to thank my actual research people in the mental health community, trauma-informed, somatic-informed, sensory-motor-informed, somatic-experiencing-informed, attachment-informed, they got Bezel van der Kolk, Daniel Siegel, he does mind, brain, and relationships, Terry Real, Ruth Lanius, Stephen Porges with the polyvagal theory, we got, I'm forgetting, well, Gabor Mate. I haven't read much of his material, but he's out there too, and I know I'm forgetting some beautiful educators, so all of those lovely human people, uh, Patrick McNamara, definitely with the religious self, and a lot of other aspects from the neuroscience, uh, Sabine with physics, so all of these lovely educators basically share something that helps a person to go in depth, and, and you know, me sharing this is so that we can disengage from having people who do spiritual bypassing, so that they don't actually know what they're doing as a human and they think of like that other video where I say people actually think they're anointed or special because of Claire's, not that it's part of our human makeup. In fact, people don't understand that human is part of nature and that our evolution, the fact that we have secondary consciousness is part of nature's evolution and a biologist will tell you how nature doesn't actually have a way of destroying itself theoretical biologists like Michael, I think it's Levine, in one of his videos, Always Well or Big Think, explains the mind-blowing uh, information about how evolution actually will always find a way to evolve in a way that leads to more life. In fact, he talks about this experiment with tadpoles, and apparently humans don't remember or stay connected to the fact that we're part of nature. And I say apparently because to me, it's always been obvious. We're awesome. And, of course, we don't know everything. So, yes, the past was pretty brutal. We did come from the mountains, and we still have people that want to go there and want silverback-type leadership. So that's where we're going to leave it all alone because I actually understand the word unresolved trauma and attachment wounds, which is why I'm translating something because karma, it's not good or bad. It's when you are unconscious of your own self, which means you're not creating a relationship with those emotions. So I can actually use Patrick Tiahan right now, childhood trauma survivor, as he shares in one of his memes how when you have attachment wounds and childhood trauma, you will have a disconnect to your emotional body. And you will not have the full spectrum of feelings, range of the, these emotions. You will not know them all. Your body has to protect yourself. So you can talk about getting out of your terror-struck passenger to a confident driver, navigating, <laughs> choosing your destiny, all these beautiful words, but let me make it human so that you can know what it actually is, because that way we don't sensationalize it and people don't do, again, the spiritual bypassing. It's sad because then they don't become their actual spirituality process. They don't move into functional adulthood. They don't move into integrating their brain because they think that by following words, uh, they're doing it instead of noticing emotion. So number one, those six basic emotions I, I want to address is very important. People in civilized society carry a great deal of unexpressed emotion within. Yes, there's also transgenerational trauma. So before we can actually cultivate 
a society with emotionally mature people, the ones who do dharma, so we sit in neutrality, equanimity, because we are okay with likes and dislikes. We accept those aspects that we don't want to. So let me get a hold of my lovely Daniel Siegel. Where is it? The right side of our lovely brain is what is able to sit with the unknown. I have my notes right here. And it's able to actually have you not freak out. Now, if you are a person who does put into practice the inner growth mindset, in a way of allowing yourself to sit with your emotions, that means you can sit in unknown for a whole bunch of hours without freaking out about it, meaning getting angry at somebody or upset. And I don't know where it is in my notes. Anyways, the right side is where you can actually sit with all information and not be, here it is, uncertainty is in the right brain that you can sit with it. The left is our chit chatter. And in fact, I actually watched a video, it was last night, about when they began neuroscience to split the brain and cut the corpus callosum, which connects the two. And the studies showed, <clears throat> I didn't highly love the way this person presented all of it, but they have a book and all this, so long story short, they presented what researchers that did do this when they split. Uh, they cut off the corpus callosum, which has the left and right mode, communicate what would happen. So in studies, it showed that when you show the left eye, it goes to right, something like that. So the invert, I, I always see these, these data points, I always forget. But the left eye would be able to use right side of the brain and the right eye, yes. So the when they would see an image, if they were using the left mode of their brain, they would be able to speak what they saw. And then with the right side, they were able to draw. And so they would have, uh, the experiment was one hand had a hammer and one hand had a saw. And the eye that saw it, the drawing was the saw and the mouth would say hammer because again, the left is the verbal. And the left would create and does create a story for the right but it's a story that's disconnected from reality so the way he presents it as always a lot of people saying you don't know your reality da, da, da. i would venture off into saying something different learn how to understand how the brain works learn how to sit in it and learn to engage with your 24 hours i mean the reality is you're always around people but before you can even do that you need to be happy to be a human uh, understand about emotions, want to understand. So back to actual childhood trauma. The part about how people feel inside is not straightforward. A lot of people don't recognize that the wanting to be with the mountains is an indication you don't feel safe around people. And there's dysregulated, modulated, embodied experiences, which is why the good therapy community is important because they have a way of explaining what a person will need before they can actually mature usage of this so basil van der Kolk, you must be able to sit with your sensations meaning if you can there's a quote where he says if you can sit with your sensations that's a good start because then you can sit in your brain with mindfulness and actually be able to contemplate then you have the next step imagination is your neuroplastic agent so if you're chit-chatting uh, about people with shit in your mouth well i mean it's pretty straightforward and there we have adaptive children who basically their behavior is about power and control trying to prove they're right, uh, self-bridal expression. Terry Real talks all about how the adaptive child doesn't try to be in a relationship. They just want to be right, and that's because there's an insecure ego. Childhood trauma and or charge states and or your teenage behavior because the charge state stops at that teenager, and in fact, we see a lot of teenagers out there. I do. The adults see it, not the ones who are teenagers. So here's why a person who does spiritual bypassing, teenager, emotionally speaking, and that doesn't mean they have unresolved trauma to the extent that any person who does will go to a therapist because they will have very much desire to be able to get out of bed to do things. So <clears throat> again, as Patrick Tehan points out, hurt people who hurt people can do the work. And the movies, though, make it seem like drama land is the norm of adulthood land. So I wanted to add a little bit more food for thought on this beautiful post by Sadhguru and what his book is and that karma is not something bad, all people already know this, but it's definitely stuff that you have not yet explored about yourself and that you can do it with lovely Sadhguru, you can do it therapists, 
You can do it with a buttload of free content, by the way. And really, though, the only person who chooses to love yourself and others unconditionally and to try and move into this direction is you. So allow yourself to stay compassionate. And remember, we don't walk in other people's shoes. Have a great day.